live on Facebook. Hello, Facebook world. Hi, guys. Okay, so now let me um, join as well. Send in the request. Hi, 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 Kelly. Okay, send request. <laughs> Um, it says window treatment Friday joined. I'm approving the request and I should be there like momentarily. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <Ta -da>! yeah. Hi. <laughs> Here we are all together. Mm. Let me just move this down. Make sure. Can you see the um, slides? Okay. We can. Okay. Awesome. Let me see if I can. And the sound is okay, it. everybody. Just yeah. Wait. Let us know how the sound. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's no echo. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to get started, right, Kim? We're going to go. I mean, I apologize in advance for my voice. Um, What's happening to your voice? Is the season. <laughs> I have a little bit of a cough and a cold winter allergy, so my voice keeps coming in and out. So we'll Actually, I, you sound very sexy. You have like oh, the do Demi, I? Demi Moore. You got the Demi Moore <laughs> voice. <laughs> the sexy voice. I don't have it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I, because mine's very high pitched, I think, uh, so when I get a cold, I'm like, oh, I sound sexy. I love it. I'm going to be like this. I don't need any lozenges at all. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, anyway, we have so much fun around here. But yes, yeah, this is our holiday episode. Here we are with a little bit of a festive holiday mm -hmm. cheer in our outfits, especially Kim's is the best, I think. He, he I, really improvise. The I had to improvise this morning, everybody. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Listen, if we don't have fun at it, oh, there's Gina on, hey, Insta, Gina on, um, on Facebook. Facebook. Hey, Gina. Yep, All we right. had a we had a bow from a holiday basket that I just pinned right to my sweater here, everybody. Perfect. So. Perfect. And you know what? If you didn't tell anyone, everybody would have thought that this is exactly how it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. All right, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so um, for those of you who are just joining us, today's episode is about commercial spaces. So this first space that we want to um, discuss is a project that I actually did uh, pre-pandemic. So we installed this right before, you know, everything kind of shut down two years ago. And um, this was for Rosie's Trattoria over in Randolph. And she had built this really gorgeous space um, upstairs of her restaurant so she could host parties, bridal showers, baby showers, um, you know, birthday parties, sweet 16s, mm -hmm. whatever the case is. And uh, then once the, the space was built, they realized that they needed some window treatments to kind of cozy up the room. Of so being that it's an Italian restaurant, we had a lot of traditional elements in there, but she didn't want to do the whole traditional swags and jabos and everything else. She still wanted a nod to okay. the traditional side of things, but she wanted to have a little bit more of a contemporary flair. Mm -hmm. So we opted for a um, semi-geometric pattern on the cornices. So we did really mm -hmm. beefy upholstered cornices with a, um, so this is the other side of the room, um, with panels that are tied back. And then we match the tie back, so the nod to the tr more traditional side, to the, the print in the cornices. Now, um, if uh, they want, the panels are fully functioning. So oh, if they cool. if they do want to take them out of the tie back, so what we did was we have the tie back secured behind mm -hmm. the uh, panel so that if they just want to release them from the sides that you see the outer ends, they have the ability to do that. And they're on super fine rods that they just pull with the cords to shut them. If they wanted to like darken the room to make it feel a little bit cozier. Um, Rosie's also hosts a lot of times um, like wine tasting events upstairs in this space. So she'll do like a wine pairing with um, a, a dinner or host ladies night on Wednesdays where you get to taste a bunch of different wines. So it's a really cool space. So um, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out because it just kind of made the room feel very warm. You're only really seeing here three windows, but there's about 10 windows in this entire space. And there's- Oh wow, how big is the space, do you remember? Um, it's it, The way that they have it built out, it almost, she has it so that she could divide it out so it's two separate rooms, but then it's just one large room. So right. um, that's where it's unique. So we also, she also wanted to have some window treatments, not to warm up the space, but also to um, help like absorb with the sound and the echo and things like that. So the more fabric you add, that also helps with it. Um, we also helped Rosie with the outside portion, just a little fun fact, with the um, exterior part of her restaurant because of the pandemic, she could not host all those beautiful functions upstairs, upstairs. 
in her, you know, reception rooms. So we put um, an outdoor, we did an outdoor genius with side panels and things wow. like that. So that this way she was able to host those parties outdoors, still, you know, safe and everything else. Um, and it's pretty cool. I mean, I've, I, it, this restaurant's only about 15 minutes from my house. So I have dined outside mm -hmm. underneath our genius awning. So it, it was really, pre it was really interesting to see how we, we were able to help this uh, restaurant out pre-pandemic, you know, with their reception rooms upstairs, and, and then during, during the pandemic, um, you know, the so restaurant could, must be must be doing really well. Oh, it's excellent. Did the upstairs like that and do a genius awning? As from all of our previous awnings episode, we know that genius is not for the uh, faint of heart. No. So if you are in the area, the Randolph, New Jersey area, please check them out. Their food is excellent and to die for. Yeah. So this is another view of their space upstairs. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. You guys Thank did you. an amazing job. Thank you. All right. So this next project is the one that we did here at Vitalia Inc. This was from a couple of years ago, definitely pre-pandemic. <laughs> the interior design firm is Gasic Design Group. I've featured them many times here. We do quite a bit of projects for them. And this was for a clubhouse of a 55 plus community by a builder called Kehav, which is a a short version of K. Havnanian. They actually do build in New Jersey, I think by you somewhere, as well as mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. And I'm thinking yes. all over the East Coast. They're a yeah. very big builder. And they often hire a Gasic Design Group to do their model homes. And in this case, they've hired them to do this beautiful clubhouse. And of course, Richard and his team have asked us to help them with window treatments. So it's a little bit difficult to see um, on Instagram because the picture is smaller, but hopefully a little bit better on Facebook. But you see those um, big se two sets of doors flanking mm -hmm. the um, fireplace and the TV wall. So this is where we did the window treatments. And what they are, are sheer functional drapes with the um, ripple fold header and uh, just on the manual operation. So actually don't remember whether we did a cord or a wand on this one, but essentially they, they just manually operated, mm -hmm. not motorized. And the idea here was not to necessarily create privacy, but to just soften the room to just like with Rosie's restaurant, it's to cozy it up, to soften it, to um, just make it um, a little bit um, softer and prettier. You see a lot of hard lines with the um, the chairs that are happening in this particular room and the chairs are gorgeous um, but nonetheless there are a lot of hard lines here because of them so the beautiful sheer fabric and texture and some softness on the windows really added um, a nice touch to, to this particular room so in the picture is is the rod installed um ceiling mounted or is it in a pocket because it kind of yes. looks like it's in a pocket that's a really good question kim you are so good your girl <laughs> uh it is in the pocket okay <laughs> yeah because what you know especially with dealing with commercial spaces there are a couple things that you kind of have to look out for like my first thing is like the exit side that's the first thing that i'm seeing you know thinking from an installation point so i'm like did this go behind the exit sign was there a pocket created you have to think about things like fire alarms, those yes. cannot be covered and they're always right next to the door. Exactly like, right. And, Spr and, sprinkler systems, right? Yeah, or you're like, hmm. uh, motion sensors. <laughs> yeah. Am I going to drill into the ceiling and tap into the sprinkler line and then flood out this, this, uh, you know, space. So exactly. yeah. Yeah, all these, these <coughs> not so little, you know, it's going to say little Nuji details, but, you know, sprink, sprinkler system and navigating the exit signs and all the other uh, building code type of aspects. Um, yeah, they definitely um, trump the, the window treatments, right? <laughs> and because this is like a public commercial space like this, did you have to use um, fire rated? Um, materials. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, thankfully, we didn't um, select the fabric, yeah. but Richard and his team, they definitely, anytime you do any kind of um, material or fabric, rather, in the commercial space, it has to be fire rated. And yes. these drapes are not lined, so we didn't have to worry about the lining, but when they are, even the lining has to be fire rated. Yeah. So, yeah, back to um, the one at Rosie's, we did, uh, JF has a really good um, commercial fabric that you can pick from that is already commercial rated and whatnot. So uh, we okay. left out with that, yeah. JF Fabrics. Yes, okay. yeah, they have so a really, they like stuff that drapes really well. Cause sometimes some commercial fabrics would just be like, 
they tend to be very stiff, stiff yeah. and boring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So here we have a few more pictures. This is the same Please. clubhouse, but an adjacent room. Um, I think that first room was more like a dining hall, and this is more of like a lounge hangout type area. Mm -hmm. So um, we did woven wood shades inside the windows, and then we did just stationary panels uh, in the same fabric. Mm -hmm. um, on the sides of the windows Pretty. and uh, and here we have yet another um, room actually it's the same room as the second one is just that room is super long so this was just one side of the room mm -hmm. and people can either have um, like functions here or birthday parties or get to family get togethers um, or maybe they can have one big long game of yeah. something or other. <laughs> but as far as the window treatments and we were concerned uh, we used the same fabric just flanked the uh, drapery panels on those windows nice just simple nicely done okay so now we're um i'm going to take it to another side of the commercial business that we do so as i described before the genius awning that we did for um for rosies uh this is city bistro in hoboken new jersey so if anyone's familiar with city bistro i frequented city bistro a lot in my earlier days in my 20s um so um i often would sit upstairs on their rooftop and uh, the rooftop bar which was really great um they have really great food also and um with that with the pandemic you know a lot of restaurants have had to get really creative on how to um you know, keep their doors open, um, comply with everything. And so um, enter Window Works and the Genius Awning. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, their rooftop bar, this is actually, a, a, I mean, JC might murder me because I, I, I might butcher this on how many bay systems are. So they have a rear bar, a rear bar and then a front bar. So um, the rooftop expands the entire width of the restaurant. So I believe this might be the back of the restaurant so we have a genius in the front and in the back because there's a stairwell in the middle okay so we created this and we put this up actually right before memorial day weekend we finished this project and they were able to have people upstairs and shielded from the rain so can you yes. imagine a bar that um you know was shut down for almost a year they um had to have people outside or you know outside in those i call them like the, the shacks outside on the street <laughs> that you see all over like the city yeah. and hoboken and end in jersey city um right. but now they were able to have people outside and That's awesome. and, and you guys it got it done before the season started That's yes amazing. yes so there are this project is also ongoing there are other phases i believe that we are there are panels that are going on the side to really close it off to really shield from the rain because obviously you know rain can still come in from the side it's not a hundred percent like waterproof in terms of you're going to get drips here and there but it definitely serves the purpose of um, helping keep the water out and then in the summertime it can get pretty hot on a rooftop so when you want to shield your patrons from the sun um, mm -hmm. you have that ability to do that now what you're seeing here is jc who helped who design this with the yeah that's a great picture of him he's and, never in his pictures this well, is really pretty cool what this is actually this is actually a snapshot from a drone video that he took so, no way yes yes awesome. so we have a drone now and um <laughs> yeah you guys love, love their toys you're really elevating your technology yes, yes. You I, when i started here folks full disclosure when i started here about uh 12 13 years ago there was a polaroid camera <laughs> and i said no we need to get a digital camera like we have to like roll with the times it's 2008 come on let's do it um so uh, what you don't see is the file was a little, unfortunately, it was a little just too big for us to upload onto the slides. But um, JC took a drone video showing the actual genius awning retracting and closing. So oh, that's wow. why you see him there where he's like this where his, with his hand out. That's him with the remote. Oh, oh, oh. I thought yeah. he was like, look at the creation. Like, look at what, what I created. Done. Yeah, no. Well, that too. That too. Okay. But um, so, yeah, so that's one of the bar areas. So it was really cool to kind of see that done. And it's I've had a couple of uh, residential projects around City Bistro and like parking over there and looking up being like, wow, our guys did that. Like yeah, it's, it's really cool. pretty interesting. We have these genius type structures all over to help restaurants. We've done Sushi Lounge in Totowa. Um, let's see where else we have Bella Union over in the city that we just completed. Nice. Um, that's so gorgeous. yeah, if you you're guys one are of these. so skilled. You're so skilled in this really high-end, very yes. complicated um, 
awnings struck. Yeah. Oh, so that's not, I can't even call it an awning it's to be honest. I mean, it's like, like a, yeah. yeah, it's a structure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like an addition to a building. Yeah, and it really helps with expands the lot. Like, you know, for restaurants, it, when you couldn't potentially have outdoor seating with the rain, like um, we showed one with Rich a couple of weeks ago, a while ago with Nomad Pizza down in mm -hmm. Princeton, you know, that whole thing completely expanded where they could serve customers and they have people out there all year round because there's heater systems in there and whatnot. So it's definitely yeah. something that has been very helpful during this um, pandemic. That's really cool. Anyway, let, oh wait. And that's have... it from the front. So that's the back there you go. Uh -huh. and that's the front. So when you're looking okay. down up at City Bistro from mm -hmm. the street, that's what you're seeing. So mm -hmm. you're seeing our awning there from the bottom. Gotcha. You know, my husband used to work in Hoboken just a very short um, time ago before they moved his company back into the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, he prided himself on knowing all the best restaurants um, in Hoboken. So I'll have to ask him if he's ever been here. Yeah, City Bistro has been around a very long time. Like I said, I used to frequent there in my, 20, in my early 20s. Nice. <laughs> um, let me just take a quick commercial break here for anyone who just joined us. Um, you've joined a the episode number 79 of Window Treatment Friday Live, which is um, where Kim and I, Kim of Window Works, New Jersey, and me of uh, Vitalia Inc., Window Treatments out of Philadelphia area, where Kim and I come together and geek out on all things window treatments every Friday here from 9 till about 9.30. So if this is your first time, join us here um, oh, cool. one of, one of um, next Fridays. Okay, so next project is one of ours by Vitalia Inc. The designer here is Urania Pappas, and um, this was a ballroom that we did also in the 55 plus community. Um, it was called Tapestry at Montgomery, and um, it is uh, around the Princeton area. I don't have the exact address. This is where you, do you remember a couple I was going to say, I saw this one in person, folks. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, you saw in process, in, in person. In process. I saw one <laughs> pair of panels. But I did yet. I, <laughs> like when everything's like still on the floor yeah. when we try but to hey, figure out I, all the carriers. I saw, yeah, I, I, I figured I saw one up. So. Oh, did you? <laughs> I think you were like rushing a valance or something to be remade or redone. No, or what I, what, 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 so complete backstory. If anyone who came, uh, when we had our showroom show down, Vita came and was part of it and um, was actually on the winning team. Uh, and no Mimi, who was here or is still here, I don't know, Mimi, if you're here, give us you a shout. You were also Mimi, on the winning team, the winning yes. Team. So I was going to pick up the Vita Valances that you ever so nicely right. made right. for us here in the showroom. And they were just too large. to sh they, You could ship them, but the shipping was just really silly. So I just yeah. said, you know what, I'm just going to get in my car, I'm going to pick them up. And you thought I was crazy. And I'm like, this was the beginning of our relationship. And I was like, no, Vita, you don't know me. I will do crazy nonsense like this. So <laughs> well, it wasn't I, quite nonsense. Like it needed to be done. Yeah, I think so what, like, what, but I think what Kim is really trying to say, and she's being very <laughs> um, humble about it, is that she will take whatever, she will do whatever it takes. So if it takes driving two hours one way to pick something up so that it can be installed for a party tomorrow, overnight and without any sleep then Kim will do that so that's really what you're saying so it had to be done for Monday and everyone was like how are we going to get him here and I just looked at the team here I said they're like where are you going I'm like I'm going in my car and I'm going to go I just texted Vita she's going to be in Jersey it's about an right. hour whatever away from here right. Right. and they just thought I was nuts and I'm like well what are we going to do pay $700 to ship these things or right, right. Overnight, you know right and the fortuitous thing is that my shop is much further down south towards Philadelphia mm -hmm. and because we were in, in Princeton it was just so the timing it was so great worked out yeah but things I have, work yeah, out yeah. in life sometimes That's sometimes true. they don't but oftentimes they do yes so, so anyway, anyway, back to the project. Yeah, back to the project, right? So this is a uh, 55 plus community. They have houses like all around on the property and kind of in the center of this whole community as sort of their centerpiece in the way. Um, they have this big uh, clubhouse. And as part of the clubhouse, they have this big ballroom where they have events and even weddings. So oh, people whoa. actually uh, rent this space to hold their wedding. Hence, you're seeing this big dance floor mm -hmm. in the center. So they and they they have uh, like movies here for their residents and other events. So they insisted on functional draperies and they also insisted on blackout draperies, mm -hmm. too. That makes sense. So, which which is 
it, it, it is interesting and it is great with one little teeny tiny little exception. That door that you're seeing there smack in the center, exactly. that never got a drape. <laughs> The reason it never, the technical reason why it never got a drape is because there's a big exit sign up at the top and there was, there was a, I don't want to say no way, but it was a very, very challenging way for us to make it function and um, close up on the window. And also because they ultimately decided not to have, they wanted to have everything kind of on the same level and that one would have been that much higher. So there's a little bit of the aesthetic reason, a little bit of the technical reason, um, and at the end of the day, fire door too, because all the fire alarms, like, I like, can you not cover it because it's a oh, fire? Maybe, exit may, maybe code? that's what it was too. You're right. There's a little, there's a fire alarm there um, as well. Maybe that's what it was also. But in the, at the end of the day, I didn't really, some, sometimes we do things, you know, I mean, we're going to give our best advice and our best expertise. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we have to do what, uh, what the customer you know really really insists right. on even if we disagree sometimes and I right. voiced it and but what what remained unknown to me is they were so insisting on having blackout drapes for movie watching and other things yet they left that door open and so I understand leaving the door open so then let's reverse the logic and say well if the door is open anyway meaning untreated then it will never be blackout so why put blackout lining on the rest of the drapes i know that because we've done a lot of um like country clubs and done their ballrooms and have done other ballrooms as well and they everything is always blackout lined mm, we did we did a country club here in livingston where we had it was very it was um very contemporary it was through um Weiss architecture and um, it was valances that we did, but then we did the largest motorized, or no, we didn't, they didn't do a motorized, they wanted them clutch, uh, blackout shades. Wow. Because of like when they're having events, they want the room to feel cozy and dark, or if they, someone brings in a screen and they're doing a montage and I don't yeah. know, it helps with the DJ. Right, right. You're, well, I, I do understand when it's all blackout. That I get. But, but there were certain but, doors that weren't blackout. That's what I'm telling you. you that, oh, okay, yeah, they had oh. French doors that went into the cocktail hour that we did top and bottom hem and headers on mm -hmm. shears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you could see light that came in through the cocktail hour around where they host cocktail hours. So I just, I don't know. I don't, know. I, I don't think it has to a mystery to me. So at, at a certain point, you know, I voice my opinion and a question and I advise. And at a certain point, I'm like, okay, that's enough. You know, we're going to move forward. Yeah. I don't think it has to be like a hotel blackout, but they just want the effect. Who knows? Yeah. So uh, this is one angle. Here is another angle. So this is kind of a bigger version uh, picture, more of a panoramic picture of this whole ballroom. Um, a side view with the drapes open. Now, Kim, you would appreciate it. This hardware was a, a Traverse hardware from Select uh -huh. with United Supply with um, decorative fascia. Okay. And uh, um, this is not one continuous rod. We mm -hmm. had to split it um, somewhere where it made the most sense, but it's made look like one continuous yeah. rod because that was kind of the idea. So back to Vita's point there, if you're working on a project where you have one continuous rod, where you want to potentially split it is where a bracket is going. Because mm -hmm. that way, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of bracket system you're using, it just is a little bit cleaner. Because we had a situation where the wrong rods were sent and the splice was not in the bracket. And Billy said, I couldn't put it. I said, well, I, that's not what I ordered. And they said, I mean, the wrong thing. We made it work, but it wasn't like what our norm is. We always like to put the splice. I don't know. Billy likes to put the splice in a bracket. Yeah. No, that yeah. makes perfect sense for sure. And also um, from just the, uh, like the, the technical standpoint where the rod is spliced, meaning it's cut, like there's a yeah. seam in the rod. So the two rods really come together and that seam between them, yeah. that's really the, the splice. Um, this is the weakest point of the rod yeah. too. So when, if the drape, traverses through that splice or stops at that at that splice this is where the rod will have the highest propensity to bow down yeah. so this is where just physics standpoint this is the place where you want to um, grab it and support it with the um, bracket exactly so already everyone so that concludes our episode of commercial spaces 
Um, before we go, there are a couple of um, free goodies that we wanted to discuss. Uh, if you are new to the window treatment market and uh, really just are watching our videos to kind of get a little bit of an education, um, head on over to the Window Works website. Luann wrote a Window Works like 101 ebook, uh, Architectural Digest is Coming 10 Things You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatments. It is free. So if you head on over to windowworksnj.com, you can download your free copy. Mm -hmm. And also from Vitalia Inc., we uh, have a gift for you as well. It is a curated lookbook filled with inspiration and education. It is digital. You can download your free copy at vitaliainc.com. And in there, you will find over 30 different window treatment ideas that you are welcome to swipe, steal, and use immediately on your next project. I even included the excerpts from some of the presentations that I have done for various organizations and just different speaking events where I gave you some really good juicy nuggets of information and um, technological uh, terminology type things about window treatments. So head on over to vitaliainc.com and grab your free copy today. And if you uh, want to keep up with everything that Luann is doing, because that is one hashtag busy lady, um, <laughs> head on over to LuannNigara.com where you can keep up with all the things that she's doing. And if you want to listen to the audio version of um, Window Treatment Friday, where that kind of was the, um, the, the catalyst and the start of our WTF live here um, and you can hear Luann and Vita discuss different topics of uh, window treatments. Um, you can find all of those episodes there as well. So for our Window Treatment Friday episodes with Luann, we concentrate more on the business aspects mm -hmm. of window treatments as it relates to either a window treatment professional or an interior design firm. Whereas here on the Window Treatment Friday live version of this, Kim and I um, geek out on all things visual and pretty and mm -hmm. challenging and really can show you with pictorial references everything that we're talking about. Yes. And before we let you go, I want to give you the information to contact, to get in touch with me and contact me. If you are an interior designer in the Philadelphia area and are looking for support with your window treatments, if you're looking to elevate your window treatment game, if you're ready to fly first class in the world of window treatments, we are a go-to one-stop shop resource, a concierge level, a white glove level service for our local interior designers and some national as well who have projects around here. So you can call me, DM me, PM me, email me. I am here to answer any questions that you may have. And if you are in the New Jersey and New York area and you have a commercial project, whether it's uh, window treatments or awnings, we would love to help you out with uh, said project, um, give us a call here at Window Works. You can find us on Instagram at Window Works and on Facebook as well. Awesome. So you guys, before we let you go, just a quick um, no programming note. Next yeah. Friday is Christmas Eve and the following Friday is New Year's Eve. So Kim and I are going to take a much deserved break. <laughs> from um, not just this show, but everything else that's happening in um, our lives. And I'm sure everybody can sympathize and understand. Yeah. So um, we will post some reruns or some, some of the best episodes maybe that we've liked. So mm -hmm. we won't leave you hanging. There will still be some variation or version of WTF Live, but you just won't see us personally live. But you shall uh, in the new year. What is yeah. it? January Hold on. Let 3rd, me look up. 6th, 7th, I believe. Yes. You are so back. We will be right back to you live, Kim and I bantering and geeking out on all things window treatments. Hopefully feeling refreshed. Yes. <laughs> so needed. So needed. <laughs> Going on fumes around here. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. All right, all right everyone. everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope you have a really great holiday season and a happy new year. And we'll see you in 2022. 2022. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Have a good weekend, too.